haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. We can draw a simple picture that summarizes the information presented in the question. Now, the top portion of this picture represents the initial state of the block, where it is sitting at rest at the top of the ramp. The spring is completely relaxed at this point, so we could say that xi is equal to zero. Now, the block slides down the ramp a distance of three meters, gets to the bottom of the ramp, and squishes the spring. And what we're trying to figure out is by how much that spring gets squished. So we're looking for x final. Now, importantly, the question mentions that the ramp is frictionless, and because of that, we can use the conservation of energy. Notice that initially, the only energy present is the gravitational potential energy. There is no kinetic energy because the block is not moving. There is also no spring or elastic potential energy because the spring is relaxed. On the other hand, once the block slides down the ramp, there is no longer any gravitational potential energy because it's at the bottom of the ramp, but there is definitely spring or elastic potential energy because now the spring is compressed. So at the top, we have the gravitational potential energy. At the bottom, we have the spring potential energy. There's no kinetic energy at the bottom because the block has come to rest. So what we know from the conservation of energy, of course, is that the gravitational potential energy will equal the spring potential energy. Now, gravitational potential energy, of course, can be represented as the mass times the gravitational constant times the height that the object is off the surface. The spring potential energy is equal to one half times the spring constant times the amount by which the spring is compressed. We'll notice, of course, that delta x is the same thing as x final minus x initial, but from our picture in our earlier discussion, we know that x initial is zero. So this would cancel out, and we would be essentially left with just xf. So we can substitute xf in for delta x. And indeed, our goal is to solve for xf, and to begin to do that, we could multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so that we can cancel out the 1 half on the right side. We can then divide both sides of the equation by k. And then finally, we can take the square root of both sides. And what that will do, of course, is isolate xf. Now, almost everything is known on the left side of the equation. The mass was stated as being 12 kilograms. G is 9.8. K was given in the question as well. What we need is y. Now, let's recall that y would be the height that the block is initially off of the ground. And perhaps the best way to see that height is to actually look at the bottom of our picture and maybe extend a right triangle over it. It's a little bit crude, but hopefully we can see where the y would be. We're looking for it right here. Now we have a 35 degree angle. The y sits opposite to the 35 degree angle, so that calls to mind the sine. We know, of course, the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. In our case, the angle is 35 degrees. The opposite side is y. And then the hypotenuse, you can see, is marked as 3 meters. That was the distance that the block slid down the ramp. So if we multiplied both sides of this little equation by 3, that would cancel the 3 on the right side, and we would see that y is equal to 3 times the sine of 35. So that's going to go in for this y right here. With that in mind, we can plug in all the known values. And when you crunch this large square root on your calculator, you should get approximately 0.116 meters for xf, and that will represent the amount by which the spring was compressed. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional questions. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.